did you kill your daughter? No. That's an emphatic no. I mean, the ludicrous thing is um, what, I suppose, what's been purported from Portugal is that Madeleine died in the apartment by an accident and we hid her body. Well, when did she have the accident and died? Because the only time she was left unattended was when we were at dinner. So if she died then, how could we have disposed or hidden her body, you know, when there was an immediate search? It's just nonsense. So, and if she died when we were in the apartment or fell and did something, why would we, why would we cover that up? And this is what we call the embedded confession. This is where a guilty party will put together in their own language what happened. And we need to listen and believe them. More ludicrous that we've obviously hidden her somewhere incredibly well where nobody's found her. I believe what she's telling me. I believe that, um, first of all, the word obvious means to accept without question. And I am following it. I don't believe any parent could, you know, and I don't believe we could ever reach a point where we just think, oh, well, we've done everything now, you know. Whilst the situation remains as it is, you know, Madeline's out there and she needs us to find her. Mm -hmm. You'll keep looking forever. We will. This is, uh, again, another indication that the processing of information has been complete. She tells us what she doesn't believe, tells us what doesn't happen. I don't believe any parent could, and I don't believe we ever could, reach a point, and this is her language that I believe her, we just think, oh well, we've done everything now, you know. I think that we've hidden her incredibly well, we've done everything we now, her death wasn't intended, um, we've moved on. So while Madeline's plight, while Madeline's pain, while Madeline's suffering is there, no, while the situation remains, it's a situation. Madeline is no longer part of the picture. There's a situation, and those in situation involved in it are she and her husband. For them, it's a situation. It is not a trauma. Mm -hmm. This is very soft language. The situation remains. Not Madeline's not been found. And you know, Madeline's out there. Do you notice that she avoids saying anything about the person that has her? Or the people that have her. So not only do we not have any connection, but even if they had been guided by law enforcement, they would be speaking to the kidnappers. They would be seeking to provoke empathy or some reason to bring her back. No, she's just out there in the passive voice. That again is another indication they don't they're not concerned. Madeline's beyond beyond the need of their concern. What's the last thing she says? She needs us to find her. You keep looking forever. And um, I can't help but wonder if the interviewer thought they're going to be like what we call the O.J. Simpson searching for the real killer. O.J. said he was going to search for the rest of his life for the real killer. He had no confidence it was going to happen anytime Six before. Six uninterrupted minutes. O.J. puts himself hypothetically at the scene of the crime. Um, the chapter, chapter six, is called The Night in Question. Mm -hmm. uh, and you write in the book, now picture this and keep in mind that this is Purely hypothetical. 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 Yes. Why don't you tell me what might have happened on the night of June 12th, 1994? <laughs> and let's just walk yeah. through the night. I, well, first of all, it's, this is very difficult for me to do this. Uh, it was very difficult for me because it's hypothetical. I know and I accept the fact that people are going to feel whatever way they're going to feel. <laughs> You know, uh, they're going to, uh, um, you know, some, uh, whatever, uh, whatever they want to feel. In the book, the hypothetical is... Uh, uh, Charlie. Uh, Paul Sutter. Charlie. <laughs> uh, this guy, Charlie, shows up, the guy who I had recently become friends with, and uh, I don't know why you had been buying the Cole's house, but it told me you wouldn't believe what's going on over there. And... Uh, and I remember thinking, well, whatever's going over there has got to stop, right? So we kind of hooked up together, and, uh, you know, I'm kind of broad stroking this. We go over, get into Bronco and go over. Let, let's just go back and do the details. Where did you I'm park? I'm the detail. You park in, in the hypothetical in the alley. Right. You park in the alley. Yeah. 
and you put on a wool cap and gloves. Uh, in the hypothetical, I put on a cap and gloves. Right. Yeah. And um, you reached under the seat for? Um, a knife. I always kept a knife in the car for the crazies and stuff because you can't travel with a gun. And I remember Charlie saying, you ain't bringing that. And I didn't, right? But I believe he took it. Charlie took the knife? Yeah. In the book. Yeah. Yes. So the back gate, you go through the back gate? Yes. And it was open or broken or? I don't recall. Okay. I go to the front and I'm looking to see what's going on. Um, and I can see that it appears like Nicole had, fly, I had candles all the time. She really did to keep her overhead down, I think. And music was on. And uh, while I was there, a guy shows up. You know? So Ron Goldman comes in the back gate. Yeah. A, a, a guy that I really didn't recognize. I, I may have seen him around, but I really didn't recognize him to be anyone. And, uh, and I, in the mood I was in, I started having words with him. He says to you, I just came by to return a pair of glasses. Judy left them at the restaurant. Yeah, words to that effect, yes. And, and uh, he was I don't on... know if I believe it or didn't believe it. Uh, it was pretty much immaterial because, you know, uh, I was more concerned about everything that, that everything that was going on, you know, and uh, was you know, fed up with it, I guess. And uh, You get into a fight. Nicole comes out. And verbal, a verbal A verbal fight. fight. Got a little loud, and by that time, uh, uh, Nicole had come out, and we started having words about who is this guy, why is he here, what's going on. And, and she says, this is my house, get that the F out yeah, of here. Yes, and uh, which I didn't like because, once again, this is the same person, and if you read the book, you'll see some things that happened in the two weeks leading up to this that were uh, very, very irritating, you know. Uh, and I think Charlie had followed this guy in, one make sure it was no problem, and he brought the knife. As things got heated, uh, I just remember Nicole fell and hurt herself. And uh, this guy kind of got into a karate thing. And I said, well, you think you can kick my ass? And I remember I grabbed the knife. I do remember that portion, taking the knife from Charlie. And to be honest, after that, I don't remember. Except I'm standing there and there's all kind of stuff around and um, um, what kind of stuff? Blood and stuff around. You know, we. You know, I hate to say this, but this is not even I'm right, sorry. Right. I know we got to back up again. Right. It's <laughs> okay. I want to back this up. This is hard. This is this hard. Is hard. To, yeah, I know. Yeah. I want to back it's up hard to, to try to make people think that I'm. A... <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Um, you wrote in the book, I had never seen so much blood in my life. Mm. Yes. Covered, you're covered, the scene. Can you describe yeah, it? I, I, it's hard for me to describe it, I'm telling you. I don't think any two people could be um, murdered the way they were without everybody being covered in blood. And of course, I think we've all seen the grisly pictures after. So yeah, I think everything was covered, would have been covered in blood. What goes through your mind at a time like that? I don't know. It's like, uh, what happened? Right. Mm -hmm. You write about removing a glove before taking the knife from Charlie. Uh, you know, I had no conscious uh, memory of doing that, but obviously I must have because they found a the glove there. And blacking out. Have mm -hmm. you ever blacked out before? Not to my knowledge. No. No, of course. Uh, of course, if something like this would take place in anybody's life, if it were to happen, I would imagine it's something that you would probably automatically uh, have trouble wrapping your, your mind around it. It was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. Staggering first-hand details about the crime scene, which he says are hypothetical. You wrote in the book, I had never seen so much blood in my life. It's hard for me to describe it, I'm telling you. I don't think any two people could be um, murdered the way they were without everybody being covered in blood. Then you see bloody footprints and you decide to take off 
Yes. Actually, I, I believe Charlie kept saying we got to get out of here. And in the book, you describe taking off your shoes, your pants and your shirt and dropping it in a bundle. Do you remember that? Uh, yes. And do you remember what happened? Because what are you going to do with it? <laughs> you know, somebody's got to get rid of, uh, as you may have called during the trial, is that wear the bloody clothes. So somebody had to get rid of the bloody clothes. Right. And you had left your keys and wallet in your pants pocket and you had to go back and get it? You know, to be honest, uh, I think, I, I know that to be true, yes, yes. Um, and Charlie is hysterical, screaming, Jesus Christ, RJ, Jesus Christ, and you tell him to yeah, shut up? Yeah, he's in a panic. He was in a panic, and I'm telling him to shut up, let's get out of here. So you get back in the car, you take in your clothes, put them yeah, in the bundle? and drove back, and, and it, it parked a block away, because I knew the limo would be there, and came across the backyard through the two tennis courts, and, you know came through the house. So you went through the neighbors? Neighbors, yeah. He had a tennis court, then I had a tennis court. And you go into the house, and what happens in the house? I, 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 I ran upstairs to take a shower. I actually ran upstairs and took some of my bags and came back downstairs and put them out front.